For nearly a thousand years, the pipe organ has inspired the faithful in services of worship. There is something inherently spiritual in the sound of the instrument, and for many, a real pipe organ is an essential part of the sacred experience. For the past nine years, the Congregation of the United Methodist Church in Jamestown, North Carolina, has dreamed of bringing a pipe organ to their church. Organist Sylvia Curl is one of the people who helped keep the dream alive. My mother was an organist, and every church that I've been in has had a pipe organ. So I'm just, I know what it's like, and I, I would like for this church to experience this, and soon we are. For many years, the congregation has made do with an electronic instrument, but the church never seemed complete. In a few weeks, after nine long years of fundraising, planning, and renovations to the sanctuary, the new pipe organ will finally arrive. It's an emotional thing for me just to experience the power of the instrument. You can combine sounds in a pipe organ, and the power and the majesty of the wind going through those pipes is, is extraordinary. This is what our sanctuary should, should look like. Where are the pipes going to be? They have some holes in the walls up there, and there are going to be even more pipes than that. These are just the pipes that you can see. This is a very big instrument. It's going to be here for a long, long time. I bet a lot of you will get married in this church, and this will be the organ that will play at your wedding. So this is a special day for you, even if you're only four or five or six or seven. These are not a clear-cut radius. So, so these are at the Holtkamp Organ Company in Cleveland, Ohio, so Chick Holtkamp and his team of craftsmen have been working to transform the dreams of the people of Jamestown into a real pipe organ. Holtkamp comes from a long tradition of organ builders, following his father and grandfather as head of a company which dates back to 1855. The first and foremost criteria is, where can I put this organ? Organ is the part where the pipes are. Where can I put these pipes so that this organ can lead the congregational singing of this big group of people? If you, if you do everything else and they don't sing, an organ builder has failed. Today, there are over 75 companies in North America that build pipe organs. It's a process that has changed little since the Middle Ages for the simple reason that each organ is unique and must be custom designed and crafted for the particular building in which it will be played. Power tools certainly help, but most of the organ's thousands of parts are still essentially handmade. It has taken 20 people six months to build the Jamestown organ, transforming raw wood and metal into a complex musical machine with nearly 3,000 pipes and weighing almost 30,000 pounds. So it's maybe nine scoops here. Nine? Yeah. In the pipe shop, the pipe makers are preparing to cast metal from a molten mixture of tin and lead. Does it come? When it reaches nearly 500 degrees, the metal is poured into a wooden trough. A slit at the bottom leaves a thin sheet of metal behind as it is pulled across the casting table. The lead cools first, forming a delicate web pattern. That's a keeper. Eventually, the tin begins to cool, forming large spots within the web. This soft spotted metal is ideal for making organ pipes because it is easily molded and never loses its shape. First, the metal is cut, rolled, and soldered together to form a long cylinder called the body. Next, the foot of the pipe is beaten into shape against a wooden mandrel. Then the area where the mouth of the pipe will be cut is flattened. And finally, the pieces are soldered together to form the finished pipe. Chris Holtkamp is the fourth generation of the family to carry on the tradition. 
When a, when a pipe comes out of the pipe shop, it doesn't really make any noise. Well, it does, but it's, it's not good noise. It sounds sort of like this. And um, in order to get it to speak correctly, we have to make certain modifications to the mouth area, uh, open up the toe of the pipe, and then also cut it to length so that it speaks the correct pitch. Each pipe must be adjusted or voiced so that it blends harmoniously with its neighbors. After the organ has been completely installed, the voicers will travel to Jamestown to tailor the sound of the instrument to the particular acoustics of the church. The console is the control center of the organ. With its keyboards, pedals, and stops, it connects the organist's hands and feet to the pipes through a series of complex mechanisms called the action. This keyboard is an electric action keyboard. That means when we push the key down, we are, we are making an electrical contact from a set of contactors under here, which in turn actuates the valve under the pipe and lets the pipe speak. So the, the action here is electrical. There are also, and we make, organs that have a mechanical linkage, that when you push this key down, there is no electricity involved. The, the player's finger actually pulls open the valve under the pipe. In order to show you the mechanical action, we have this mock-up, which we made for uh, several student demonstrations here in the shop. These are the keys. These represent the chests here, the great organ, the swell organ, the pedal organ, and each one has its own pipes. And you will note that the action is actually mechanical. It comes down through here, comes over here, and pulls open the valve inside here. Now, if I pump this little thing, and then we get some wind up, and we're making that speak. And the pedal. This is, the, this is the oldest action in the organ world. This is the way organs were built in the 1500s, 1600s, up until the advent of electricity. The earliest organs were lap-sized, little more than bellows, keys, and pipes. By the 12th century, the church had adopted the organ for use in worship, and it began to grow rapidly in size and complexity. Over the next 600 years, the organ became an engine of innovation, driving the evolution of Western music and technology. By box time, it had developed into an incredibly intricate machine, the 18th century equivalent of today's computers. Although the organ itself has constantly evolved, basic organ building techniques have remained remarkably similar over the centuries, directly connecting today's builders to a thousand year tradition of fine craftsmanship. I've been here 38 years. What's, what is it, third, third generation? Yeah, third generation. I started here about eight and a half years ago, right out of high school. Now I do a lot of traveling. I'm also going on the Jamestown job. I'll be there with Mike Boyce and the organ. How far away from the in the final stage of building the organ, all of the thousands of parts are assembled in the frame to ensure that everything works together as designed. And for the first time, the labors of every individual come together in the form of a single instrument. Once the organ is completely finished, everything's been hooked up to its mate, the organ will come down, all the individual pieces will get wrapped, the pipes will get painted, the pipes will be wrapped, all the mechanical work inside will be finished, and then we run a large moving van and a driver. And we'll meet the truck down in Jamestown. We'll unload and begin assembly. On a Sunday morning in October, the organ finally arrives in Jamestown. This is a special day for the whole congregation, but particularly for Martin Sennell. An architect and 20-year choir member, Sennell led the effort to bring the organ to Jamestown. It's been a long wait. Go ahead. 
In this truck is the entire instrument, 15 tons in all, weighing as much as 10 automobiles. And gold. Well, that's your pipe organ. And as you can see, it's in all kinds of pieces and boxes and cardboards and wrapping and everything's tied in so it wouldn't jump around. And it came 500 miles. And we'll be unloading it today and in a couple weeks you'll see it all put together. How much would it all weigh put together? About 30,000 pounds. How are y'all gonna get him to the church? Times? Pardon? We're gonna carry it. I never seen the pipe before, and it's my first time <coughs> seeing one, and I'm really excited to see one, and this is my first time. You first? Mm -hmm. What about that? As part of a ceremony to consecrate the new organ, 24 people have been chosen to carry pipes into the church. Is that okay? All right, sure. Remember, you're paid by weight and size. <laughs> paid by weight? <laughs> Anybody drops one now, it costs $5,000. How about one of these for you? How's that? Yeah. Yeah. Hustle it up. We haven't got the yeah. full verses. Yeah. <laughs> He's really yeah. This is the first and last time that most of these pipes will be seen because the majority of them will be hidden behind the organ's facade. For nine years, we have had this dream of a pipe organ here at this church, and today, seeing it, it's just incredible. It's, it is becoming a reality. It's almost like a dream that is finally uh, not a dream anymore. I was so overcome with emotion when I had the pipe and we were waiting to come in in the procession. Someone asked me then, how does it feel? And I couldn't answer. My, my throat just, I, I choked up. It, it, it was as an, an emotional a time as I've ever felt, I think. It's just hard to believe that it's finally happening. The Holt Camp crew will spend the rest of the afternoon unloading the truck piece by piece. The thousands of pipes, the framework, the blowers, the ducts and wind chests, the console, and all the mechanisms of the action. Like a giant jigsaw puzzle, the pieces of the organ fill the sanctuary. It will take the crew three weeks to put it all together. Then the voicers will come to adjust the pipes to the acoustics of the church. Well, I've always uh, had a great interest in the, uh, the longevity of the organ. It's something that we're building for generations, and that's the high point for me. When we're finished, it looks like it's always been there. It doesn't look like it's been added later as an afterthought or anything like that. It's actually part of the room itself when it's finished. And that's when I get my biggest satisfaction out of the job, when the organ is set up in the final room, in the final place, and then we can really tell what it looks like. There's something wonderful about this kind of creation, that when they walk out that door, there's something very special that's here. Seven weeks after it arrived, the organ is complete, just in time for the annual Christmas music program.
The Holt Camps have come from Cleveland to join the celebration and listen to their instrument in its new home. Good morning, Martin. Yeah, it's great to see you, boy. You picked a perfect day. Hey, Chris, Martin. Chris, Good I to tell see you, you, it's wonderful. You're going to be just so excited to see you. It's fantastic. Well, I'm looking Wonder forward to it. It's a great time. I'm so glad y'all could make it this Absolutely. morning. Absolutely. Thank great. you. Good morning. gratifying part of this is when I hear a congregation just simply let loose and sing like blue blazes. That is so great. The new pipe organ links the church to an American tradition of sacred music that stretches back to colonial times. <laughs> 